boycotting the nation of Israel and demanding these young leaders, future leaders of Norway, that they demand that they recognize, as a nation, they recognize the Palestinian state. At which point the foreign minister said, quote, we are ready to recognize a Palestinian state. I await the actual resolution text. Palestinians will promote the UN General Assembly in September. This is back in July. Listen to this, folks. The Palestinians must have their own state. The occupation <coughs> must end. The wall must be demolished. And it must happen now. At which point, those young people cheered and applauded his statement. Well, what's interesting, folks, is the very next day, that very same island was attacked by a gunman who killed at least 77 of those people. The gunman, disguised as a policeman, pulled out weapons, opens fire on the youth camp participants, this killing spree has gone down in history as the biggest single gunman killing spree in recorded history. Now, the very same young people who met to organize their stance against Israel were the very young people who were the victims of this horrible attack. Wow. Now, <clears throat> there's two parts to this terrorist attack on that day, July 22nd. It started in Oslo. If you know anything about the Oslo Peace Accords, you will know that's where George Bush Sr. got this whole thing started about exchanging Israel's land for peace accords with the Palestinian terrorists. And folks, it's gone downhill ever since. For our nation and for anybody who else has joined with this, a car bomb exploded. This is what happened first. <clears throat> this is all done by this young man. It was exploded outside the Prime Minister's office in the government buildings there in Oslo. That explosion killed eight people and wounded several others with more than ten people critically injured. And then, of course, he goes on that island and starts killing people. Now, I want you to look at Hitler's blonde-haired, blue-eyed superior race because they've come back this time they've come back to bring a curse yeah. on Norway and you can find it out folks when you consider the fact of the results of this you have to ask yourself does this sound like a blessing or does this sound like a curse and when we were here earlier in the year we did a, a two-part message on every single time that we do things against Israel, we get smacked. And yes. it's the truth. Yes. And I want you to know something. America is going to fit, and we'll see this tomorrow as Sherlock addresses this issue in great detail. In just a moment, I'm going to turn it back to him. He's going to share a little bit something. But I want you to know where we fit in prophecy is according to how we treat Israel. Right. There's no doubt about this. And I will tell you something that God made it clear that there's nothing, nothing really super special to people. Look what he says in the I'm quote. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all the people that are on the face of the earth. Now watch this. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But, why did he choose them? Because the Lord what? Loved, what to say? Loved you. And because he would keep the oath which he hath sworn unto your fathers. Now with that said, listen to this God of love statement. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. I don't know about you, brother, but I want to get on that team. Amen. 
And I'm here to tell you that I, for one, am not going to side with the spirit that's against Israel. Amen. I'm going to side with the spirit that's for Israel. Amen. 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 Come to the show. Brilliantly done. Amen. 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 five minutes of your time here today so that we can let you know that something prolific has happened in our world in conjunction with what, what John has been telling us today. Would you ever believe that the day would come when the government of Israel would be seeking friendship with Christians? Amen. Did you ever think that would ever happen? No. I've studied prophecy for 37 years. I never thought that would ever happen. Did you ever think that members of the Israeli government would be asking to travel to churches to tell the churches how much Israel needs the prayer and the support of Israel? Now hear this. Do you believe that God gave the land to Israel? Yes. Do you believe that it's an everlasting possession? Yes. Do you believe that God gave it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yes. Uh, yes. Is it theirs by right? Yes. Political right? Yes. Inheritance right? Yes. Development right? Yes. Military right? Yes. But how could you be owner and occupier at the same time? You can't. How could you own the land and then be called it's impossible, so it's based on a deception. I have the birth certificate of an Israeli member of government that was born in 1947. I, I wish I could give this to somebody to get some copies so it could be given out to the church. If you look at the Jewish man's mother and father, it calls their nationality Palestinian. Because the true Palestinians are the Jews. I, I want to say this to you, and tomorrow I'll be speaking on America and Israel, but I'm here for a purpose tonight. And John, once again, that was brilliant, my friend. The hours and hours and hours that you spend, I, I am very well familiar with. Uh, please listen very carefully. Everybody wants to divide Jerusalem. The Vatican wants to do it, the fanatical Islam, uh, Islamics want it, the Arab nations around want it, America has a twin state solution, every nation in the world. But what is not known by Christian people, because Christian people in America have become apathetic, especially in relation to Jerusalem and Israel. But what we don't realize is if Jerusalem is divided, and Israel is pressured to go back to pre-67 borders, we lose the Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross. We lose Calvary. We lose the Mount of Olives. We lose the Garden of Gethsemane. We lose the Temple Mount. We lose the Wailing Wall. We lose the Eastern Gate. And we lose the Kedron Valley. In other words, if this goes through, there is absolutely no reason for you to go to Israel except to float on the Sea of Galilee and go to Tel Aviv. Yeah, right. All your holy sites are gone. Right. Yeah. Right. So I ask you, can we afford to be the Neville Chamberlains of our time? No. And be silent about a holocaust or be silent about the third reich and let hitler take charge can we be silent no. i need an answer no can we be silent no have we been silent no to some degree have we been apathetic yes. no some no some yes with two two no's and, and for those that say no, I would love to know what they are doing. 
to stand for the nation of Israel. I, I, because I applaud that. I am here for a reason. Please listen to me very carefully today. John, I have to have you come to one of my meetings and do this. All right? You know, it's good when you can team up and celebrate your brother. He says, I'm going through the tribulation. But he fits the description of the false prophet. I will not read this to you. This is on the Israeli government's letterhead. Did you understand what I just said? It is signed by one of the top five most powerful men in the land of Israel, David Rodham. If I misquote this, I am in serious trouble. So, I will not read this to you. You can pick up one of these on my table. This is my appointment letter from 17 members of the Israeli government to be their director of 20 countries, their liaison to North America, and their voice to the African American church. Well, that should have caused somebody to clap. I know probably since your name wasn't on this, you were all petrified. So I speak to you now for two minutes on behalf of 17 members of the Israeli parliament. This is my commission and this is my right. I am the only one in the United States with this letter. There are not five of us. And God would choose a brown man with a goatee. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and bypass the white man. <laughs> and choose somebody that looks like Saddam's nephew. <laughs> to stand for... See, what you don't know is I was held hostage by fanatical Islamics at gunpoint. AK-47, 30-odd sixes and machetes. And they said, we will kill you. Seven hours after, I was walking out free. Amen. By the way, it was world news for two days until the invasion, or not invasion, until we decided to do something about Kuwait and Iraq. It was world news for two days. So I want you to know that what I'm doing here right now is on behalf of 17 members of the Israeli government. I weep every time I say that. Because a wretched dog like me, God would choose and bypass the pyramids of Giza and the palaces of Rome and choose my body to be his temple. So now, Pastor, this is yours. I speak to you. I have been instructed to seek out in the United States of America pockets, places, people, and pastors. You notice the piece? <laughs> to identify as supporters of Israel. I have been asked to choose men that would take a stand for the nation of Israel. I came this close to canceling this meeting a week and a half ago because my schedule became so 